All right, hi everybody. Let's create some bodies. So the first body we're going to create is for the ground. So in our declare variable section, we're going to declare the ground material. We're going to create that in the ground function. And in the list of setup functions, that function will be called create ground. And I just put it above the animate function. So let's scroll down to just above the animate function. Right on, so here's the animate function below. And this function will be called create ground. The first thing we're going to have to do is create a physics material for the ground. A physics material is like a coating over the body and that controls the friction and the bounciness. We call that restitution of that body, but we'll set those later. So I'm just creating a new Canon material. I'm calling it ground material in quotation marks because that's how we'll refer to it later. And I'm putting it in this ground material object. Next, we have to create a shape for our body. Now there's different types of shapes you can use. In the ground, you can use a plane. So I'm just making a new Canon plane. And notice there's new size in the parentheses. Because if you make a plane and set it on an axis at zero, it will go on until the end of the world. So you can't fall off. There's no edges. Now if you want that, use a plane. But you don't have to use a plane. You could use a cube. So here I'm just creating a new Canon box. And I'm going to set the size of that box by passing in a new Canon Vector 3. And those will be the dimensions. This will be the length, 12. This will be the height, 0.5. And this will be the width, 12. But you can put in whatever size you want. So if you want a ground with edges, use a box. And if you don't want a ground with edges, use a plane. I'm going to use a plane. Next, we're going to create our body. So I'm calling it ground body. And I'm creating a new Canon body. And we're going to pass in the mass, the shape that we created up here, and the material that we created up here. So I'm setting the mass to zero. If you set a body to a mass of zero, it will not move. That means it won't be affected by gravity. And we call that a static body. And then I'm just passing in the shape and the material that we made up here. Now, if we're using the plane, we have to rotate the plane because a plane assumes that the Z axis is up and down. But I want the Y axis to be up and down. So I have to rotate it. Quaternion is the rotation. So I'm changing the quaternion of that ground body. I'm setting it from this axis angle. So the axis angle is on the x axis. And that's what this is. See, the one is in the x position. I'm rotating it on the x axis in this vector by this amount. And this is minus 90 degrees in radians. So if you're using the plane, you need to rotate it. So y is up and down. And then we're going to add that body to our physics world using the add body method. So world add body, and which body am I adding? The ground body that we created up here. And now we've got a ground for our world. So if we run it, right on, so here's our plane. So let's put some stuff on our ground. Uh, let's create our player body. So let's create a function for that in our list of setup functions, just below the create ground function. So right there, we'll call it create player. And let's scroll down to the animate function and we'll put the create player function just above the animate function. So let's scroll down here. So here's our create player function just above the animate function. So we're going to follow the same formula we did for the ground body. We're going to make a physics material for our player body. So I'm creating a new Canon material. I'm calling it speeder material in quotation marks here because that's what we'll refer to it later. I'm storing it in the speeder material object. Then I'm creating a body shape and the body shape will just be a box. So I'm calling it speeder body shape and I'm creating a new Canon box. And this new Canon vector three will be the dimensions of that box. So it'll be one unit long, half a unit high and 1.5 units wide. We'll see what that looks like right away, but it gives it a nice kind of flat low shape like a land speeder. And then we have to create the speeder body. So this will be in the speeder body object. So when we create a new Canon body, we're going to set the mass. We're going to pass in the material and the shape. So the mass will be one. So that means it will be affected by gravity. We're passing in the material we created up here, speeder material. And we're passing in the shape, speeder body shape that we created here. Now we've got our speeder body. So here we're going to set the position of the speeder body. I'm setting it at the origin where X is zero, Y is zero, and Z is zero. And then I'm going to add the speeder body to the world using the add body method. And that's it. Our speeder body is created. So let's see what that looks like. Right on. So here's our speeder body. 
So now it's not any fun. We're just looking at a box on a grid. So we better add some key controls so we can play around with it. Let's just stop and think about what we need to do with the key controls. What do we need to do? We need to move the land speeder faster and we need to move the land speeder slower. And we have to be able to turn the land speeder. So let's make some variables in our declare variables section to keep track of that. So speed and max speed will keep track of our speed. Speed will be zero to begin with and the maximum speed will be one for now. How much will speed change by? So each time you hit the forward key, it will change by 0.25. So after four times, you'll reach maximum speed. Now, later on, we can change this value, but I want a higher acceleration just so I can test things out faster. If I put a really low value, it gives you more control, but it takes longer to get what you want. And I'm going to keep track of the angle of where the land speeder is pointing. So I'm going to set the initial angle to zero. So when I press the left arrow key, it will change the angle. And when I press the right arrow key, it will change the angle. So let's go down just above the animate section and put our key controls. So here's our animate function. And just above it, we're going to put our key controls. So here I have a document on key down event listener. So this document refers to this HTML document. So whenever a key is pressed down, it's going to record it in this event. Okay. And I just put console log event here just to show you that there's a lot of information the computer keeps track of whenever somebody presses a key. It's crazy. Okay. So I'm just going to press a key. You see it says keyboard event. That's the event it listened to. And it has a whole bunch of information here. Look at all the information, but we only want a certain part. We want the key property here. See, it says key and then quotations arrow up. That's the key I hit, arrow up. See, I pressed arrow down. I could press arrow left, arrow right. So that's what I want to keep track of. I want to check if the player is pressing these arrow keys. So we're going to use a switch to do this. So a switch is kind of like a series of if-then statements. So this is how the switch works. The switch expression is evaluated once. Value of the expression is compared with the values of each case. So let's look at our value. Our values are arrow left. That's one case. If it's not that, is it this one? Arrow right. Is it this one? Arrow up. And is it this one? Arrow down. And if it is one of these things, it's going to run the code we put just below it. And then it's going to stop running it at the break statement. So that's what we got to do. We just have to tell the computer what to do in each of these cases. Okay. So let's start with the arrow up and arrow down. We want to move faster and slower, right? So we need to change the speed by the acceleration. So let's do that. Okay. So here we go. So when the arrow up key is pressed, we'll add acceleration to speed. That's what this plus equals means. It kind of means speed equals speed plus acceleration. And when the arrow down key is pressed, we're going to subtract acceleration from speed. Now let's take care of our arrow left and arrow right keys. So the question is, what units are we going to use to change the angle? We're going to use radians. Radians are a different way to measure angle than degrees. Okay, so when the arrow left key is pressed, we're going to change it by one degree, but convert it to radians. So that's what this math.pi divided by 180 does, is convert a degree into radians. So we're adding that to our angle. And when we go to the right, we're going to do the opposite. We'll subtract that amount, like so. So there we go. So we have our basic key controls. Awesome. So we can change the angle and we can change the speed. But all we're doing is keeping track of the angle and the speed. We have to take those numbers and apply them to our player body so it can change position and rotation. So let's do that next. Let's update our speeder position and rotation from our key controls in the animate function. So in the animate function, let's call a function called move speeder. And this will update our body position and rotation from the key controls. And just above the animate function, we will make the move speeder function. So here's the move speeder function here, just above the animate function. And the move speeder function will check three things. It's going to check if our speed is bigger than the max speed. And if it is, it's going to set the speed to that max speed. So it'll never go over the max speed. And I've never seen a land speeder reverse, so I am not letting it reverse, but you can do whatever. I'm saying if speed is less than zero, then speed is zero, like you can't back up. And now we'll update our position based on the unit circle. So a unit circle is with a radius of one. Basically, we can take the sine of an angle and the cosine of an angle, and it will give us a position at the edge of the circle, no matter what that angle is. And that's what we're doing, right? If I'm hitting the right arrow key, I'm changing this angle and I'm finding this position here. 
and if I'm hitting the left arrow key, then I'm finding the sine and cosine of that angle to find this position when I move to the left. So that's what we're doing. I'm taking the speeder body x position, and I'm adding it by the speed times the sine of that angle. And I'm taking the speeder body z position, and I'm adding the speed times the cosine of that angle. And then we're going to have to check something else here. So just above it in our key controls, we have to add this. So it is outside the first bracket, but inside the second bracket. Problem is units. A quaternion is not radians. Radians and quaternion is not the same thing. Just like degrees and radians are not the same thing. So we have to convert radians into a unit the quaternion will use. So here I'm taking the quaternion of that speeder body and I'm setting the axis angle on the y axis. That's why there's a one in this y position in this vector. And by how much? By that angle. This angle that we calculated here when we're pressing the arrow keys. And that will make sure when we hit the left and right arrow keys that speeder body is turning. And there's another thing we have to check in the create player function. So let's go above here. So if we run it, we're going to get an error. It says speeder body is not defined. That's because I'm taking speeder body in other functions now. Here and in the move speeder function here. And we declared it in the create player function as a constant. So we can't do that. So in the create player function, we have to get rid of that const. So now it just says speeder body is equal to new canon body. And we have to go let speeder body in our global variables at the top of the document. So let's scroll up. And just above the speed is equal to zero, I'm going to go let speeder body. So that way all the other functions can use this object. Well, there's one more thing we have to change. Go scroll down to our init scene function while we're up here. And I set the camera far to 100 and things will disappear too fast. Let's just make that a thousand instead of a hundred. And when we run it, so there we go, forward, backward, left, right. So my camera is pointed in the wrong direction here. So let's change that. So in the init scene function in the camera section, let's try minus 15 on the Z position. Now I should be looking behind it. There we go. So now forward is forward, left is left, right is right. I can stop and go, hey, right on. So it's going. Our key controls are working. Awesome. All right, and one more thing to do in this episode. So at the bottom of your file, below the animate function, we're going to add a window resize event listener and a window resize function. And that way, the window size will automatically scale whenever you change the window size. So if we scroll to the very bottom here, we're going to add a function on window resize and it's going to set the new camera aspect, update the projection matrix and set the size of the render. And then we're going to add an event listener to the window and we're going to listen to resize events. That way, whenever the window is resized, it will run this function on window resize. So in the next episode, we will work on the chase cam and add some ramps.